I'm your mom. I'm sorry this video is a little bit late. Um, as in, it's not Saturday. But I had an exam Friday night and it was a really, really tough one. It was my statistics exam. And I'm not very good at statistics. It was really stressful. And then there was a fire alarm and we had to switch buildings. This happened. By the time Saturday rolled around, I was like, hell of it, I'm taking the day off. Too much excitement for one week. I figure I freaking earned it. So when I said I was sorry, I wasn't really being sincere, honestly. I think I was just being Canadian. So with that in mind, today's subject is about stress. Now for this, uh, I'm referencing Han Seli, um, which I will scroll bar for spelling. He developed the levels of stress. Stage one, Ta-da! Is alarm. Uh, basic uh, self-defense reaction. So your muscles tense, your eyes dilate, your heart rate increases, your breathing, your sweating all increase, and your stomach clenches. And if you're like me, your jaw clenches and it ends up hurting after you calm down. And that's always fun. Uh, so that's like the standard stuff. Like, you know, somebody's called you a name and you're afraid and you're like, ah, what's wrong with, what's up with that crazy guy? Kind of, everybody's been there. So that's stage one. Stage two is resistance. So that's when stress is prolonged. So basically your defenses are still there. You still have like all of the heart rate eyes uh, are dilated a little bit. Your muscles are still sort of tense. Um, all those symptoms are still there, but they're subtler so you don't necessarily notice them. If you've ever been in a situation where, you know, something was stressing you out and you weren't aware of it till like after the fact, there's like an exam coming up or, you know, if you're about to move, moving's a big one, where you're moving and you're packing and everything's fine, everything's fine, everything's fine. And then you're finished the move and you know, your back aches and you think, well, maybe I wasn't lifting boxes properly but it isn't until you're completely unpacked, if you're like me, that that you finally like relax enough that you're not stiff every single morning. Um, and then you realize part of that stiffness was attributed to stress because the moving was stressful and you needed time to recover. Stage three is exhaustion. Now that's when, say something's stressing you out, um, maybe you're moving, we'll take use the moving example again, and you realize that you know, you have to sell your house first uh, before you buy the new one because you don't necessarily have the budget to be able to just move into a new house and wait for the old one to sell. So you're sitting there, you're pretty much, you, you know, you have to keep your house at show home level because you might get a call at any time, you know, saying like, hey, we're coming over. They're like, you know, from your realtor to say I'm showing the house. So it has to be, it has to look good. So you're living in this space that doesn't even feel like yours. It's stressful, but it's at that point where like, if it drags on long enough, you go through the initial stress, and then you go through the resistance period where you're stressed, but you're still behaving sort of normally, and you don't realize that the symptoms are still there, to the point of exhaustion, and that's where you realize, I can't hold it in anymore, I am going to explode. And that is the exhaustion period. So that's when people have their mental breakdowns, uh, that it's when, uh, you know, things turn into long-term stress things, like that's when chronic anxiety can be developed. So how does it work? So neural pathways in the brain, basically they work on a use it or lose it basis. Say this is the, well, I'm gonna go into the uh, long-term muscle memory section of the brain. Whoops, that's back here. Um, so in there, say you've got a neural pathway, and then you've got another neural pathway that wants to connect to it, and that is you trying to train yourself how to ride a bike. Now, the more you ride a bike, whoops, can't get my shit together today. Uh, so the more you ride the bike, the more that this solidifies. And then, you know, you ride the bike some more, and you ride the bike some more, and you just keep doing it, keep doing it, until you've got Shazam! You have got one hell of a connection that even if you put the bike down, and you didn't ride your bike, like, ages and ages and ages, you're gonna remember how to do it, even if you haven't done it for, like, 
40 years. So this is the amygdala. This is where we get to the amygdala. Woohoo! It's in this little thing. It's in the midbrain area. Um, this is where you have your emotions like anxiety, and that's where a lot of this is triggered. Now, it's more complicated than that and goes through different parts of the brain, but mainly, like, if you want to talk about emotions and anxiety, it's this little... Isn't, isn't it an accurate portrayal? I've got... Yeah. Anyway, and the same thing happens, is if you are dealing with stress, you've got a neural pathway and a neural pathway, and they want to connect. So... Boom, boom, you have your stress scenario. And then you keep reinforcing that stress scenario. And eventually, it basically becomes this thing that just fires constantly, whether you want it to or not. People who deal with anxiety, especially like generalized anxiety disorder, uh, which is one of the outcomes of being exposed to prolonged anxiety, is basically you are on edge as if you were about to go in to take a test, meet with your boss, do whatever, all the time, for no reason. And this is caused by prolonged exposure to stress. So the more you are stressed, the more your brain will learn how to be stressed. It's exactly like learning to ride a bicycle, or learning anything, really. So, that's the video, part one of stress and how to deal with it. Uh, part two is going to be on coping mechanisms, which ones work and which ones don't. And I realize the irony of leaving you in suspense when I'm talking about um, coping mechanisms and stress. Um, so check back next week. And uh, I'm also working on a series that's uh, regarding the treatment of mental health. So, so many reasons to subscribe! Ha 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 ha. Man, I'm, I'm so on it with segues today. But in the meantime, this has been me, I'm your mom, I've been rambling, my cat's at my feet, and this is a brain. Um, bye! <laughs> Weight increases, your breathing increases, your sweating increases, and your stomach cl- Ow! I'm gonna have to do that again. <laughs>